Well, hello there. So, I thought I'd make a little video about my camera collection, which is kind of small, but I mean, well, not the smallest, but uh, it's not big at all. But yeah, uh, first of all, apologies, because I know jack about photography. I know pretty much nothing. I collect cameras, I like the technical aspects of this, of all this stuff, but honestly I know Jack. Uh, I managed to get good pictures somehow. Uh, you know, I know the very basics like the exposure triangle and yeah, and the reciprocating rule and all that stuff. The reciprocating is it that? I don't know, sounds something like that. Uh, uh, so yeah, let's let's start. So I thought we'd start first with the uh, stills, pic uh, sorry, stills uh, cameras, and then we'd move on to camcorders because there's not many camcorders. And let's start, uh, let's go by in, in chronological order. Uh, so let's start with this, which is my oldest. This is in a Verlisa 2 uh, case, but it is not a Verlisa 2. Uh, yeah, the case is in a bit of a state, a rotten state, that is. But the camera is actually doing fine, so let's take it out of the case so I can show you. Uh, Verlisa, if you didn't know, is a, well, was a Spanish camera manufacturer. Uh, so yeah, this actually is a Verlisa color camera, very simple camera. This is from 1967. Uh, it uses 135 film, so that's 35 millimeter uh, standard, you know, film rolls. Uh, it's just a very simple camera. Um, this is a point and shoot, pretty much. I guess it would go into that category. Uh, these are the typical cameras that people love for lomography and all that stuff, uh, like street photography and crap. It's all mechanical, of course. Uh, let's see, there's a film transport and I'm clumsy, of course. Uh, very simple camera, very, very simple, but it works. Again, all mechanical. Uh, the lens is it's just actually uh, quite a decently rare version there's two versions of these uh, so there's a version with a 40 millimeter uh, focal length lens let's see if we can focus on that there we go and there's the 45 millimeter which is the one I have uh, this goes from uh, 1 2.8 f1 2.8 to F16 right here uh, it's all manual so nothing automatic uh, manual focus and everything this is not a rangefinder I repeat so it uh, has a simple very simple viewfinder and that's it uh, so you have to focus manually on everything you have to guess guesstimate I guess uh, the distance to stuff to focus on it unless you're using like a very uh, small aperture in which case eh. uh, so yeah it has a flash sync connector right there um, we have it has no hot shoe of course being 1967 and it has uh, four shutter speeds it has one one twenty fifth of a second has 1 60th and 1 30th and B of course uh, B being for those of you who don't know who know even less about photography than me is just holding the shutter open as long as you keep the shutter release uh, pressed uh, it has a an ISO dial here uh, but it does nothing it's just to remind you of what uh, film you put in there so uh, you can see there, it's AS8 in uh, equivalents, uh, and it has uh, there. No, that is not racial, uh, racist 
slur. That is just how we say uh, black in Spanish. So if you turn it the other way around, it goes to color. It's just to tell you what film you have there. We have a shadow release cable uh, socket right there and a shoe again. Uh, I think you load the film on this one by pulling up here, of course. And yeah, it's very, very simple. Uh, again, I've shown you the film transport. This camera, I mean, it, it takes good pictures. It, they're, they're not bad at all. Uh, if you know how to operate uh, one of these, which, I mean, it's not that hard. If, if someone like me can actually take pictures with this, uh, I guess it's not that hard. Uh, but the chromatic aberration on these lens, man, it looks like, I mean, it has tons of chromatic aber aberration around the edges and stuff. The center is fine. The center looks pretty much perfect, but yeah, these lens are not the best. Still, if you want that hipster uh, retro uh, look, it's a good camera for that. Uh, I've used it uh, twice. Like I've taken like 50 uh, exposures with it and it, it's a fine camera. I mean, it, it's all right. I mean, it's no SLR, but <laughs> it's, it's fine. Uh, let me put it back into the case. And sorry for the lack of editing. Uh, I am in the process of rearranging my room and I, my, my main uh, editing computer is not functional yet. So let's go to the next one. So we have this guy right here, which is this one I actually got uh, yesterday with the lens and everything for 15 euro. Uh, pretty good buy, I guess. Uh, this is a Konica Auto Reflex TC. This is a cut down version, I guess, of the Auto Reflex T3, I think, either that or the T4. Um, it's a sort of basic SLR from Konica. Again, 1976. Um, it's mostly mechanical. It does have. Uh, automatic exposure, automatic aperture, rather, um, which is electronic. It does have a light meter, an electronic light meter. The viewfinder on this is actually quite uh, destroyed. Some dumb twit decided that it would be a cool uh, thing to clean uh, the pentaprism with something abrasive and yeah that side is completely destroyed right there uh, the side with the, where the light metering happens and all that uh, and actually this is all really foggy it's because that, I don't know like it looks like the glass on this fell out at some point and probably the same uh, dumb fuck that did that uh, put it all together with super glue and forgot to clean in between the the glass so it's all fogged up and it look fogged that is from fog uh, and it looks like shit uh, but yeah let's go over the features of the camera the lens is the stock lens so this is a hexanon um, 50 millimeter 1.7 lens it is the second version of the lens which is a tad more uh, compact than the first version and the focus range is limited to about 0.55 uh, meters right there down from 0.45 uh, on the original version of the lens uh, I've heard it is a very very sharp lens uh, one of the sharpest <laughs> indeed like ever made uh, I don't know about that I, I honestly bought this camera I have to take it for a spin like I'll well the lens not the camera I it, it's a pain sadly like the camera mechanically is perfectly fine so like it, it works perfectly fine I haven't tried uh, the light meter or everything or anything I don't have the lithium batteries or any batteries that would go in there so it took it takes two batteries there uh, as you can see there Mallory FX for uh, PX13 batteries 
but I mean, of the pleather here is uh, not so much on the backside, but on the front it's shrinking a little bit. It's very uh, used, worn out here uh, near to the timer. So yeah, it does have a timer, which is nice. Uh, but yeah, I mean, mechanically this camera is perfectly fine, um, as far as I can tell. Uh, it has a shutter speed range of 1 1,000, uh, 1 500th to 1 8th, and of course B. And the ISO, of course, it's adjustable being an SLR. You, what, How you change the ISO on this camera is you pull the shutter dial up, and then you well, you change it right there and that was my cat entering the room so yeah uh that's that it has a hot shoe manual film film uh rewind of course and oopsie there we go it has a mechanical shutter of course it, it's all mechanical again uh, except for the light metering and the automatic aperture on this or oh, also another thing that sets apart uh, the lens from the first version is it has the round uh, sorry no that's for another lens I'm sorry uh, it has the AE mark right there instead of EE and yeah I'm gonna try this lens I have to try it uh, on my FS1 which is the next camera we're gonna see uh, there we go it's it's a nice camera this I would like to use it at some point uh, but the viewfinder if I can fix that if I can manage to fix that uh, without breaking the camera uh, I will use this camera because it is both uh, so my my main SLR let's bring it into view here uh, my main camera is this this is a Konica FS1 this is sort of my daily driver I mean when I want to go out and take pictures I use this guy but this guy's heavy and thick. Uh, I mean, compared to the to the Auto Reflex TC, it is heavy and bulky, uh, mainly because it takes four double A's. Uh, this one, being all mechanical, well, it doesn't take uh, batteries. Well, it does, but for light metering only. And it's thinner and it's lighter. And with the pancake lens, which are the forty millimeter lens that I have on my FS1, it's actually a really, really compact SLR, and yeah, I have to see what I can do about the viewfinder situation, because I would really like to use this guy, like really, uh, it's a really good camera. So yeah, uh, let's take a look at the FS1, this one is from 1979. This is the first SLR with motor, uh, with a motor, uh, not not a winder, it's a motor film advance, and it's all electronic, so it has no batteries in it. Right now I take the batteries whenever I don't use it, because the electronics on this, this is the first version, so it has a relatively low uh, serial number, don't know if you can see that, right there, it has a relatively low serial number, uh, so... The electronics on this are very, very delicate, and yeah, I don't want to leave uh, batteries in it for too long. Also, you can see what film I use for uh, for my yeah regular usage. Uh, it's bottom of the viral uh, film, pretty much. The only th thing that's cheaper than this Superior Extra uh, film is, well, the ISO 200 version of this film and the Kodak, what was it, Color Plus 200. That stuff actually comes out very good for what it is. I mean, it's like one euro a roll of 36 exposures, which is, it's cheap, but it works. So, I mean, again, I, I use film cameras because I don't have the money for an SLR yet. Uh, a DSLR, sorry, a digital. SLR. Well, let's go over the camera. So we have shutter speeds. We have uh, from 1 1,000th to 1 uh, second, I guess. Yeah, 1 second. Sorry, one, one half of a second. Uh, then we have 1 second and 2 seconds. 
and then we have B, of course. Uh, B being as long as your batteries last, because the shutter on this thing is electronic too. Um, we have a power button thingy, which also locks the shutter button. The metering on this thing is actually indicated. Let me take off the lens cap, that would help. Uh, it's actually not indicated by a needle, but by LEDs. Uh, high tech in the 1970s, almost 80s right there. Uh, so yeah, that is pretty cool. Um, and although it doesn't indicate like half stops and all that, and neither does the lens on the ring, on the aperture ring, uh, it actually does take pictures with half stops. Uh, it, actually, it actually does have that accuracy if you use it in automatic exposure uh, mode. So yeah, it's only shutter priority, of course. And yeah, the ISO you adjust by moving the center here. It's quite hard. Um, the button, the shutter button is actually a, a two step uh, shutter button like modern digital cameras have for auto focusing and all that except this one only does metering so it, it has when you touch it lightly it does the metering and then you press it hard and it takes a picture huh you have the film uh, indicator there so you can see how many pics you've taken you have a film advance indicator this lights up red when the film is well advanced um uh, film rewind uh we have here and this being electronic and all uses this proprietary connector for the shutter release uh, remote control and I th think you can also sync flashes using this connector not sure it also has a regular um, X flash uh, sync right there and this is not TTL like it can use high voltage uh, flashes this, which appears to be a light at first, is also a push button, and it's the timer. You push it in, and this thing starts blinking, and in about 10 seconds, it takes a picture. Uh, the film transport, let's take a look at that. Comes out that way. The film canister, you actually load it up from the bottom. You don't have to pull up uh, the rewind crank or anything. And this transport, uh, you have to be very careful uh, uh, when loading the film to check if it's actually loaded, because it sometimes it doesn't grab on the film. Like it's not like in the old ones where you put it through a slot. Uh, you had you just put it there, close the lid, and this thing presses the film against this uh, drum here, which is rubberized and it simply grabs the film and sometimes it doesn't grab and I have shot uh, 36 pictures that went nowhere because uh, it didn't grab the film at all so yeah look out for the film rewind crank spinning when you uh, load the film because yeah sometimes it just doesn't grab <laughs> for some reason or another I think that's pretty much it. Of course, I forgot to mention these two have uh, the Konica AR mount. So, of course, this lens I'm going to test on this guy, um, the FS1. Uh, they have, of course, AR mount lenses. There we go. AR bayonet mount. And these pancake lenses are uh, praised by many, many people. Uh, so yeah, I'm lucky to have them and if again if I could put them on the auto reflex It would make for one heck of a compact SLR, but I don't know uh, Also, let's take a look at the battery compact compartment. There we go and yeah for double A's Sakura film which actually I believe this camera I bought it secondhand, but I think I'm the first one to really use it because it actually had Sakura film in it. Like, probably the roll that came with it. Uh, it didn't look used or, or anything either. Like, it was not used at all. 
<laughs> so yeah, it was pretty much brand new and it seems it's seen some abuse from me. So I've had it for like three years and I've used it a lot, like a lot. I've, I've probably taken like more than a thousand uh, exposures with this thing and it's 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 a great camera. I, I gotta say it's a great camera. Uh, for the Konikas, so that's my two Konikas. Uh, I also have this lens, which I got for I think ten euro. This is a one twenty five, oh one thirty five, sorry, uh, millimeter. Uh, I guess it doesn't really count as a telephoto lens, but you know, very long focal uh, length right there, f three point five. Not the fastest, uh, but it's quite fast for a for such a long uh, focal length lens. Uh, AR mount, of course. Uh, it's a relatively new version of the lens since the aperture goes all the way down to uh, f/122, and the button for the uh, auto exposure. Uh, lock is the round one as opposed to newer lenses which have uh, uh, the actually what no I, I thought well it has this oblong one like it is yeah it's not round I thought well I guess this lens then is from like 1970 to I don't know 1979 maybe 19 to 1981 I guess since it has the you know it goes down to f122 I don't know uh, so yeah this one works for uh, distant things it's not a zoom lens I actually don't own a single zoom lens and it also has this little <laughs> tube thingy that protrudes out yeah hexanon lenses very good glass do recommend uh let's see for next thing from 1979 that is my kodak ek 160 ef i haven't taken a single picture uh, with this thing mainly because it the film for it isn't produced anymore it takes um pr144 film from Kodak. Uh, I'm pretty sure you could make a uh, Polaroid Spectra film to work with this. You could probably modify a a Spectra film pack to work. But I think your pics would actually uh, come out flipped. Uh, because this thing actually exposes the pictures from the back instead of the front, like the Polaroids uh, do. But yeah, this thing is unwieldy. It, it is so big, it is stupidly big. Like, it, it, it is massive. Like, let's take a look at like the Auto Reflex TC beside it, it, it is massive. Uh, it, made in the USA, well, no shit. This thing's, uh, it, it, it's unwieldy, it's just, ridiculous it takes four double A's uh, really it's, it's flash comes out like that to activate it, uh, it, it it's, it's like huge and you take the pics vertically like that too like ah uh, this I don't know how anyone could use this considering at the time there were like proper Polaroids uh, I don't know uh, so that is this is from 1979, Kodak EK160F. Uh, if I had the money to buy, uh, to risk, you know, breaking a Spectra film pack, I would actually do it, but they're 20 bucks each for eight exposures, so I prefer to use them for actual pictures. Uh, let's see, let's go. Next, 19... Uh, 80 something I don't know this is a very simple point and shoot uh, from Vivitar it is an EF35 it's mostly mechanical so it has a mechanical film advance um, sorry I have to... uh, it does have a 
flash and it does have some rudimentary light metering system uh, it has a 35 38 millimeter uh, focal length on the integrated lenses and you can see there the little light meter uh, I actually took a roll of uh, I, I actually took like some exposures uh, with this uh, I took some pictures but I haven't developed them uh, and I don't think I will because yeah personal stuff but yeah uh, it's a very simple camera it's the simplest camera I own probably well not quite uh, we'll get in, into that later but yeah I don't know I, I've seen pictures taken with this on the internet it's actually quite fine but eh you know fixed focus thing Mickey magic yeah uh, more instant stuff uh, this time it's a Polaroid image system which in the rest of the world is well sorry in America only uh, is known as a Polaroid spectra and this thing is really good for instance uh, as far as instant photography goes this is pretty much the best you can get uh, apart from you know um, what were the old, the SX-70s, of course. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's fine. It's fine. Uh, so it has lots of features for an instant uh, camera. So again, it's foldable. So that makes it very, very small for an instant. Uh, you hold it like this. Uh, and so let's take a look at... In the front, we have Quintic Lens, ooh, which means it has five different elements uh for so it has like half a like a little rotor with five elements for focusing and they call it quintic lens they are plastic they're not even glass but i mean it, it it's decent uh so that comes to this this is sonar um auto focusing so it doesn't do like um piso auto focus or anything like that it is sonar based so it does it it it, it really likes to upset uh, my cat <laughs> when I focus with this thing um, so yeah basically it sends a pulse of uh, sound of ultrasound and with this piezoelectric uh, thingy and it um, the pulse comes back and when it detects that the pulse has come back it calculates the distance uh, you know judging from that so that means you cannot shoot through windows or anything like that with the autofocus turned on um, we have light metering very rudimentary we have a little uh, window there for the viewfinder and the flash and of course the film um, output thingy right here uh, I know this is gonna be gore for someone but I haven't used it in a while I have to clean it uh, let's whoopsies let's open it up and yes the rollers are dirty because the film pack that I had in it before leaked beautiful quality control right there impossible uh, so yeah I have actually exposed like a couple film packs with this um, it's alright like I don't know I there it goes uh, so I used it when I had a girlfriend and uh, I went out with her and for quick pictures it actually was uh, pretty fine and I think I'll use it this Christmas for you know family events and all that since uh, I had a couple of um, uh, regular Polaroids you know 600 it was uh, a couple of 635s and those I gave away one of them to my ex uh, which honestly I think she uses it more than I do um, and another one to uh, an old friend and I think they use them more than I used them since I got the spectra like uh, it I used to use those a lot until I got the spectra and then yeah I, I use this thing because this thing it has autofocus and it has lots of stuff so also let's see we have uh, in the back, of course, 
Uh, we have a viewfinder. Let's, let's see if we can. It's a very temperamental uh, viewfinder, but let's see if we can actually get it to show. If I can actually get you to. There we go. It shows you the the focal. Uh, sorry, the. Uh, I don't know what you call that. The focus length. Uh, there. So, yeah. Uh, when you focus it, so it's a two part action thingy switch. Uh, so in the back you have the controls which you have a switch to change it between feet and meters of course it's in meters uh, we don't use archaic measurement systems over here uh, we have this which enables some annoying beeping sounds from the camera I hate it I think I have never turned it on uh, we have a timer which I'll, I will not activate because it will try to take a picture. Uh, we have autofocus on and off. This just puts it into infinity focus. Flash on and off, of course. And then we have the little exposure control, which I think it's uh, plus one stop and minus one stop. Uh, or the other way around, sorry. And then we have an exposure. Uh, countdown right there and also this right here is both the LEDs for the uh, flash status and it has three contacts right there for a remote so if the remote plugs into here and yeah I mean it's a fine camera for uh, for stills like for instance it does, does take nice pics uh, I just noticed there's a hole there. Hmm, weird. Um, so yeah, it's 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 a nice uh, camera. For instance, uh, the issue is the film packs are so expensive for this, and you know Polaroid and, and I mean, I mean Polaroid, uh, auth Polaroid Originals. I think it's called these days. I think Impossible changed uh, their name to Polaroid. Originals uh, made a new 600 series camera, and the 600 film packs have gone down in price, and they are 15 uh, either euros or dollars, depending on on where you live. And uh, still, for eight uh, exposures, it's not that great a value. But the Spectra packs are still 20. Why? I don't know. Let's demand, maybe. Uh, actually, that should make them cheaper, but I don't know how economics work. And well, I think that's it for the almost for the stills. And I think I'm actually gonna leave it here and make it this a two part because this is this has gone for more than half an hour already. Uh, so let's go for my last still camera and I, I don't even know why I, I spent one euro on it and I don't even know why so do you remember how cool uh, everything looked in the late 90s and early 2000s remember that bubbly design with like crappy fake chrome painting silver painting everywhere cheap plastic all that all the good stuff we love about the late 90s to the early 2000s well there's this this is a polaroid eye zone and <laughs> yeah it, it it's like if you took 2001 and make it made it a consumer product this would probably be it uh this was intended for like kids and stuff and like ugh, it just it's horrible it's cheap and uh, it's not the flimsiest thing uh, but yeah I mean it takes of course being 2000s early 2000s it takes triple A's instead of double A's because oh it actually takes double A's what do you know oh yeah good 
Uh, but this is actually an instant camera that takes uh, uh, pictures in strips, which is really weird. So like the picture is this long, right? And the film strip is this long, as you can see by the picture there. But the picture itself is a little square like this. It actually is a f technically, I guess this counts as a full frame <laughs> camera, believe it or not. Uh, but like the prints are actually like uh, like slides. They're the, the size of a slide. Uh, they are, you know, 135 uh, size, uh, as you can see there. Uh, prints and yeah so the th how how this thing works is so you would uh, buy the film strips in these little boxes this one being empty and you'd close this thing and you'd literally pull out uh, the leader uh, strip and then you'd have uh, like I don't know how many exposures you had on this, like three or four, I think. And well, you how you would take a photo is you would set this to either indoors, uh, sunny or uh, overcast. And that, what that does is when it's, well, the flash always fires. The flash has absolutely no control. Uh, but what this does is it slides. I mean, at least they have some rudimentary uh, exposure control there, aperture control, I should say. So this, depending on the position it's in, it changes the aperture of the lens. Doesn't change the shutter time or anything. It just changes the aperture on the lens. And yeah, you then like take a picture like that. Takes a pic and then the thing, uh, let me show you that. It automatically goes there and then you pull out the film strip from the camera and what when you pull it out uh, I imagine it would be quite hard there's these two rollers here that squish all the uh, caustic paste thing that uh, makes Polaroid film work and you'd get your instant picture and yeah this thing is eh I mean, I, uh, I think these, back in the day, they cost like $20, $20, something like that. I mean, for that price, an instant camera is fine. Uh, but really, I mean, this was a you, pretty much a gimmicky thingy for kids. And that was it, really. Uh, no. <laughs> and the best part about it is you cannot get for film for this anymore. And the one you can get is obviously expired and dry and... It won't even work at all. Uh, I've seen people that actually put uh, 135 film in these since, you know, it's a full frame. So, yeah. And uh, why would you do that? I don't know. I honestly don't know. Like, I've seen people that put uh, a box right here with a little uh, crank. <laughs> so you can actually... Uh, it's stupid. Don't do that. Please don't do that. Uh, but yeah, I mean that's it for this and that's it for my stills camera collection. Oh, it also came with this little baggy thing Ugh. I don't know. I mean, I, I don't usually just dislike technology because of Ugh. I mean, It's a gimmick. It's 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 not really something you would uh, No, it's like the first you know uh camera phones that, that, that wasn't meant to be taken seriously and it has an eye of course being 2000s and the iMac was released so people thought the eye stood for you know I individual and every single product had to copy the Apple design language and had to have an eye in the front uh, fun fact the eye in the iMac and uh, the iBook and all that stood for internet. Huh. This doesn't have internet connectivity. So yeah, that, I think that's it for the stills cameras. Um, 
I'll show you the camcorders in a different video because that's has gone on for 40 minutes and yeah oh I forgot to show you my accessories so I have some flashes this star blitz thingy it doesn't work but it just today I have this Olympus PS whatever if you want people to come out with red eyes on your uh, pictures use one of these and then there's this which I got yesterday this one is the one I'm gonna use uh, from now on I was using this guy I don't really take many pictures at night but this guy this is a blitz interflash EBC 19 uh, it's very basic flash but at least it has some sort of light metering so uh, okay it's, it, it's a fine flash uh, and yeah that's it oh my video light yeah it's just a floor light with a 250 watt bulb in it halogen bulb that's it don't know who made it very generic has a tripod mount at the bottom yeah that's it uh I've, I've said that's it like 10 times already so yeah again that is it for this video and next up I guess I'll make it tomorrow because there's not very good lighting right now here uh, that's for that's it for my uh, stills cameras and if I don't know I was gonna say if you like the video like it and all that stuff and subscribe and all that but honestly I want you to subscribe for my comment sorry not for my comment for my content uh, and not for what I say at the end of my video so yeah um, that's it goodbye